if robots and service robots are going to become prominent, you know, for healthcare, for safety and security in the workplace, you need to have robots that can work closely with people. So I'm here today with two very special guests. I'm here with Travis of Cobalt Robotics. And who's this? This is Abbott. This is Fifth Wall's security and workplace robot. Interesting. Did, did Abbott just talk to us? He did. Wow, oh, nice. So tell me just like, how did you start Cobalt? Like what was the original vision when you started the company before you even started making the first Cobalt. Yeah, so we really started with a problem, right? I happen to have some friends that are directors of physical security at these very large companies, and they came to me and they said, hey, we have this problem. During the day, we have incredible support staff. We have security guards, we have receptionists, office managers, facilities directors, but when it comes to after hours, think like nights, weekends, and holidays, we don't have any coverage. And so they asked us point blank, can we have a Cobalt robot here doing these tasks? That's what this robot does, is it's in your space, it's moving through it autonomously, looking for things that are out of the ordinary, huh. right? It could be people, motion, sounds, leaks and spills, you know, horrible air quality, any of these things, flag a remote operator who can come in, have a two-way interaction right there through the robot. And so how does that work? Is there actually a human that's operating the robot, like behind the scenes in a control center? That's exactly correct. So Cobalt actually manages the entire thing as a service for our clients. So it includes the hardware, the software, and that remote human being. You know, we have multiple command centers, one in California, one out in Utah. And so those people are monitoring that robot fleet 24 seven. And then what they do is they come on the screen right here to affect a real time response. What is some of the technology that, that's embedded in this robot? So this robot it has an incredible array of sensors. You know, everything from like a directional microphone array at the top, think like a Amazon Alexa or Google Home, day night cameras, high res thermal camera, touch screen, environmental sensors, you know, telling you humidity, temperature, air quality, CO2, carbon monoxide, all of these different things, the robot is mapping out what is normal in a space and then looking for anomalies. Why did you think about the real estate industry as the most logical starting place to actually deploy a, a, an Abbott? Well, actually, if you look historically at robotics, they were always deployed in heavily constrained environments. Think warehouses and manufacturing facilities. But 20 years ago, we had you know, the little Roomba vacuum cleaner robots. That was 20 years now. And so if you think of how far technology has advanced, we can now deliver really compelling services in commercial spaces right now. Interesting, and, and so is this an augmentation of the security a building has, or does it replace certain security protocols? Uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, if you're a security director, for the last 60 years, you've had the same three tools on your tool belt. You've had access control and cameras, and then you have manned guards. And there's literally nothing in the middle. And so what robots do is they let you combine the best parts of technology with the best parts of that human being. So one question that comes to mind for me is not just how Abbott interacts with people, but how people interact and react to Abbott. Like, how does the average person react when they first encounter Abbott? Yeah, and so that's actually part of the interesting challenge in these high-end real estate environments is building robots that are friendly and approachable so that you want to come up and interact with it, right? It's not Terminator, it's not Robocop, it's R2-D2, it's WALL-E, it's Baymax from Big Hero 6, friendly and approachable robots. And that's not something that robots have been historically good at, but it's changing very rapidly and, and Cobalt's a prime example. Can you walk me through like, what is a day in the life of Abbott? So Abbott's life is incredibly boring. Uh, you know, robots are great at those dull, dirty and dangerous jobs. And so Abbott navigates around, is constantly building up this model of what is normal and then looking for anomalies. And I imagine one of the really interesting derivatives of that is just the amount of data you must be capturing about not only just the physical spaces, but how people are interacting with those physical spaces. It's truly incredible, right? You have this machine that knows its position on a map that it's updating all the time. It knows its position down to like a centimeter and it's capturing environmental data, it's capturing Wi-Fi signal strength. You know, we can tell you where we should install new access points, if we have a rogue access point pop up. So where are people gonna see Abbott in the future? Are they gonna see it at malls? Are they gonna see it at stadiums? Are they gonna see it in office buildings? Like where is Abbott gonna be? So, Cobalt was really designed to work in any indoor space. And so today we have robots deployed in office spaces, warehouses, manufacturing facilities, malls, literally anywhere that you spend time in your indoor environment is a viable option for the Cobalt robot. Awesome, well, this has been really interesting. I'm thrilled to see like where we actually see these robots in the future, and it sounds like they're solving a really important problem. Yeah, they're all over the place at this point, so it's great.
So Travis, thank you so much for joining us and thank you, Abbott, for joining us. This was uh, really fun and really exciting to hear about the future of robotics and security in the real estate industry and, and how it all collides. Um, if you want to learn more about Cobalt Robotics or the built world or Fifth Wall, you can go to our website at fifthwall.com. Bye, Abbott. <laughs>